Senator Okoiti Andrew Omtata. Mr. Speaker, sir, I rise to conditionally support the motion because we need an IBC in place, whether it comes through the window or through the front door. We need an IBC in place so that we can discharge the constitutional timelines that are being, some have been infringed, as Senator Omar has observed in terms of uh, by elections for MPs and for wards, members of the county assemblies. But that being as it may, and I support the bill only because of that, that we should have it in place. But in the bigger, in the bigger equation or in the final, when I do a proper analysis of this bill, I see that we are again going to fail. The IBC we are going to have is going to be a failure uh, because, uh, and you will not be alone because you have seen all our independent commissions have failed in their mandate because we appointed them through ad hoc committees. There's no way an ad hoc committee can produce an, an independent body. I've never seen it anywhere. I've tried to research across the world. It's only in Kenya that we are trying to achieve the impossible by thinking that we can get an independent organ produced through an ad hoc committee. The issue of, uh, the issue of uh, commissioners, we need to look at the best practices elsewhere. We cannot be, uh, assume that we are going to invent the wheel in Kenya. All the democracies across the world, when you look at them, electoral officials are chosen by political parties. The people with a fight, the people are contesting for power are the ones who choose people who can sit there and represent their interests and let the contestants checkmate. But to talk of, a, to talk of a, an ad hoc committee doing that, it's impossible. You get something like on the selection panel, religious leaders. What dog do they have in the fight for electoral seats? Civil society and all these other groups. So I'm seeing this thing primed for failure. We should think of the IPPG way that we have we succeeded in this country that gave us a successful referenda and gave us a successful 202 elections. Mr. Speaker, sir, the question of the National Assembly trying to assume that it is parliament and the Senate does not exist is a very, very serious issue. And I agree with your submissions when you're on this side that wherever the word National Assembly appears, it should be replaced with the word parliament. But better still, it could be replaced with the expression National Assembly and the Senate. There's no way an election can be handled through a law made only by the National Assembly. The wards are affected, the Senate itself is affected, we are elected through this law. It cannot be done by the National Assembly alone. They are not our lords. So the Senate must be included. And I would rather be more definitive than what was proposed to use the word parliament. We have the word National Assembly and the Senate. That is what makes parliament. Parliament is not made of the National Assembly. In fact, it's a misnomer to refer to members of the, uh, county, uh, the National Assembly as uh, the members of as MPs. We are also MPs. Senators are MPs, are members of parliament. As regards the concerns that uh, Senator Chirerke raised, that if the chairman, uh, Mr. Chebukati, had been kidnapped, what would have happened? That something with a loophole would have come across to allow that. I think the question of bringing the presidential election to Bomas is unconstitutional. There's no provision in the Constitution for having a telling center at Bomas. If you look at Article 138, Clause 2, it is very clear that the election takes place in each constituency, the election for president. We should have results for each constituency. We should know who has won in each of the, of the 20, 
290 constituencies, and then we just get an aggregation. And the people to announce the winners in each constituency are the returning officers. Article 89 is very clear on how to conduct elections. So the idea that uh, you have got a chief, I think the returning officer for the presidential election, is anathema to the provisions of Article 138, Clause 2, and the Article 89 of the Constitution. So I hope that we shall have the fidelity to a Chapter 7 of the Constitution and begin implementing elections as prescribed in Article 87, uh, in chapter 7. Even under, even under Article 140 of the Constitution, where you have got dispute of presidential elections, where a petition is given seven days and uh, the court is given 14 days, I have seen people trying to say that the timeline is very short. I've even called judges of the Supreme Court have claimed it is very short. But the problem is that they are stuck in brick and mortar. They are thinking of manual elections. But if we are doing digital elections, 14 days are just too long. And I would also want to point out that uh, in Raila 1, the first petition Raila filed, a question came up whether spoiled ballots count or not. Show me where in the Constitution you have got spoiled ballots. You only have spoiled ballots when you have a manual election. But because the Constitution and, and dispense at, at fully digital election, there are no spoiled ballots anywhere. So the spoiled, spoiled ballots become a creation of the Supreme Court and it's part of how the courts have been mutilating the Constitution through interpretations not anchored in law or fact. Mr. Speaker, sir, there's also the issue that some of the people are talking of the two gender rule, two thirds gender, two -thirds gender rule. I've read the Constitution of Kenya over and over. I've never come across an expre the expression two-thirds gender rule. There's a two-thirds gender principle in Article 87, in Article 27, Clause 8, and in Article 81. So, again, it's the Supreme Court which invents this word gender rule in the advisory that the, the, for the Attorney General sought whether what he called the gender rule would apply in 2013 or would apply later. So there's nothing like a gender rule. A rule must be observed. What is in the Constitution is a gender principle, something that we must work towards. There's no obligation that you must implement a principle in this time and space. My friends had asked me to cut my submission short. So uh, there's a, a senator for Kiambu would also like to contribute to the bill. I'll be magnanimous, and I'll stop my submissions. The other had a long list of things senator to address. Senator um, Tata, the Honorable Senator Karungu Tango has not made that request. I cannot see that he wants to speak. Oh, he wants to reply. I think he wants to reply. They want to reply. So I'll be... I'll, I'll terminate my submissions. At that stage, so that I can allow them to reply. I can see it's almost time. And so, Mr. Speaker, sir, I support the bill, but I know it's going to be another disaster when implemented. But it will be able to, it will enable us to overcome a constitutional conundrum that is cascading towards us. That is cascading towards us. In the, in, the demo, in, the, in the form of uh, constitutional timelines that require the IBC to do certain things, including the review of boundaries. With those few remarks, I support Mr. Speaker, sir. Um, Honorable Senators, 